So the following three more papers presentation will be from our speakers, and we will have for each presentation we will have 30 minutes for each presentation. The speakers will have 20 minutes to 20 minutes to present, and at the 20 minutes we will have side of five minutes. Okay, five minutes to show the presenter. And after that, at the 25th minute, you will have time's up side to show to you. Okay? And we will have five minutes for the floor to have Q&A question and answer session. So we will start the paper, the next presentation, with the paper entitled Mobility and e-learning delivery methods, perspectives from higher education of Thailand from Ajahn Warasuang Duong Jinda from Sipatum University, Thailand. Ajahn Warasuang Duong Jinda, he's from Sipatum University. He is an associate, he is a associate director of Office of Online Education at Sipatum University, Thailand. He also is a lecturer and committee member of e-learning professional program, Thailand Cyber University, and coordinator of APEC Learning Community Builders Thailand in association with the Institute of APEC Collaborative Education. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Janwara Suong Duong Jinda. It is already there, uh, AJ, which is in Thai, Ajahn Chang is my Thai nickname, ajchang.blogspot.com. I have my slide in a PDF version, in video format, and also in ebook version there. So ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to start my talk. This is topic, mobility and elan. And for others, okay, I am Wara Suong Duong Jinda. My Thai nickname is Chang, as I said, but I also have English nickname, which is Michael. That doesn't mean I don't like my Thai nickname, but I was overseas for a while, once ago. And also I have Professor Dr. Yang Wan Kim from Pusan National University, and also Dr. Kitima Mekha Banchakit from the Information Science Institute of Sibutum University as co-authors. And before I start my talk, I would like to also refer to my previous studies in this topic, which I have published in two places. The, the latest one was at the 6th APEC Future Education Forum and the 8th International Alcop Conference in Busan in November. And also another one was published in the Asia Pacific Cyber Education Journal also last year. And you can get a free copy of that from that link, which you can also go to my website to download it. Or you can wait for about one week time and the video record of my talk and also Professor Timothy's talk and everyone's talk here will be available online on the uh, Thailand Cyber University website, which is www.thaicyberu.go.th. Okay, this is the um, outline of my talk. I have only four parts. The first one is introduction, and then the research method. Then I have findings and discussions, and I will finish with, of course, conclusion. Let's start. During my presentation, there will be some terms that I would like you to know first. First, TCU, of course. TCU is the host of this event. It is actually a project from government to become a central hub for e-learning at higher education level in Thailand. TCU aims to be example of e-learning for all universities in Thailand. And in 2009, their hard work was rewarded by UNESCO when they won the prize. Okay, this is TCU. Second thing is mobility. When talking about mobility in my context, I mean the ability to access and participate in teaching and learning content while you are on the go 
For example, if you have PDA on hand and you're on the bus, or you're somewhere else, you don't have a, a wire connection to get onto the internet, then that means you have mobility. Okay. Also, when you carry your iPad, something like that, you can access your e-learning content anytime. That is mobility. The next term is IDM, Integrative Delivery Method. Ladies and gentlemen, as a regular, when I teach, I would like my students to first be able to memorize something that I teach. But that is not the aim. I want them to be able to understand and to be able to apply the knowledge for a better understanding and a better knowledge. And I try to search for a list of the way that we can teach and have found this one, integrative delivery method, which has 22 modes of teaching and would allow students to gain better understanding clear understanding of the topic that I teach. And the 22 modes are here. Conference, convention, seminar, panel, forum, meeting, symposium, colloquy, dialogue, institute, bus group, discussion group, brainstorming, audience reaction team, listening team, interview, teleconference, telephone conversation, computer network, satellite conferencing, personal visit, and office visit. Oh my gosh, there are so many, right? And each of them have different kind of characteristics. For example, the discussion group number 12 is the informal gathering for discussing a topic of mutual concern. But if you look at number five, forum, it is a group discussion that allows members to participate during a period of time. See, they are nearly the same, but they are indeed different. So this is a comprehensive list that I would like to refer to today. Okay? Then I have this motivation. In Thailand, we try to teach. Everybody, everywhere, start from teaching face-to-face -face in class teaching. But right now, we have new technology. We can teach online. So we can add the element of mobility into the teaching and learning. But according to the previous slide, we have 22 modes. I'm oh, sorry. We have 22 modes of the IDM. Which mode would be good if we apply mobility into it? And which mode are not? So this is the motivation of my study here. Now I would like to take you to the second part of my talk, which is about the research method. I created an online survey form using Google Form, got it validated, and I was lucky enough that Thailand Cyber University, or TCU, endorsed my, my research, and they sent out the questionnaire to all the universities in Thailand aiming at the um, t lecturers who have hands-on involvement with e-learning at their university, okay, and also through the nine regional hub of TCU around Thailand. So my survey consists of four parts. The first part, of course, asking for demographic and general information. The second part asks about their experience concerning the IDM, OK? The experience in e-learning and also in traditional learning environment. The third part asks them to confirm my previous study, and lastly, ask for their opinion because the 22 modes of the IDM was published in 1994, which is about seven years ago. But right now we have social media. Social media has revolutionized the world, the way we teach, the way we learn. So I asked them, should we change definition of each IDM to accommodate the definition and the evolution of the social media or not? So you will know the result today. Okay, so let's move on to the third part, which is findings and discussion. I got 118 participants return. And talking about the gender, I think it's quite balanced. I got a little bit more female than male, 51 to 49%. 
Okay, so this represents quite balanced group of uh, people in terms of gender. But if you look at the age group, as you can see on the top right hand side, let me bring up my pen. Here, most of the participants are a little bit young. You can see the trend. This is six years of age or more. We have two persons, and most of them would be between 36 years old to 40 years old of age, 30 of them. Talking about their level of education, most of them would have master's degree, 62%. 16, uh, sorry, 13% of them have doctorate, and 25% would have just bachelor's degree. Okay? But when I ask them for their experience in e-learning, whether or not they have learned in e-learning, or whether or not they have teach and they have taught in e-learning, look at the blue bars first. The blue bars mean whether or not they have experience in e-learning as an educator. We can see that many people do have a few years of experience in e-learning as an educator. Most of them would be at this bar, 23 of them, or 20 of them have about two years of experience. But if we look at the red line, the red line means the experience as a learner. Okay? Most of them, 43 persons, would have less than one year of experience in e-learning as a learner. Okay? Having said that, we also have few, few, few people having more than 10 years of experience in e-learning. Okay? Uh, four of them as a learner, and seven of them as an educator. And if I convert my data into chart, as I mentioned before, IDM has 22 modes. The blue side, I'm oh, sorry, The blue side represents the experience um, for using the IDM modes in traditional education. If we cut at 50%, there would be a few tools that, a few modes that the lecturers have used, starting from conference, forum, brainstorming, discussion group, seminar, computer network, or meeting. And of course, they have used meeting more. 72.88% of my participants have used meeting in traditional learning. Looking at the green side, if we cut at 50% of the lecturers who have experience in using IDM with e-learning, only four modes that they have used more than 50% start from meeting, discussion group, forum, and computer network. The computer network is just only 60.17%. Okay, can you see that there are some tools that the teachers use together? For example, forum. You can see forum here, and we can see forum there. We have the discussion group there, and we have the discussion group there, for example, and of course, the computer network. Okay, and if I be able to explain to you this chart quickly, um, I have this side. This side, which shows the data of the traditional education, and this side is the um, data about percentage of the responders and their experience in e-learning. You can see that, for example, the conference, 52% of the participants have used it in traditional education, and of course, 47% of them have not used. Okay, when talking about their experience in e-learning, 38% of the participants have used it, and 61% have not used it. Would that mean something? Of course, that could be, be anything, but at, but I will explain to you after this. And this is another, another um, table that shows you 
I cut it at 50. Um, I think I better stop using this pen. Okay, I cut it at 50 percent. Okay, when talking about uh, the responders' experience in using the IDM in traditional learning or in e-learning, if I take the answer from those who have used more than 50 percent, I start with conference with participant have used 52.54 percent up until number 19 computer network, which the participants have used at a lot. 72.03 percent. Okay, but as you can see from this table, uh, the meeting rank number one. Okay, what does it mean? It means that Thai lecturers, about 72.88 percent of them, have used meeting for their traditional education. But if we look at the e-learning side, the number one ranking is actually computer network. Okay, 60.17% of them have used computer network in e-learning mode. Okay, and normally, if you look at the gap between traditional education and e-learning, normally, um, the, for example, for the conference, the percentage of the, the mode that the teacher have used is 52%, but the percentage of the mode that the e-learning have used is only 38%. The gap is 14.4. Everything is positive until this one forum. The forum I have found that e-learning teachers have used forum more than traditional education. This could mean something for us. That could be that Thai teachers or Thai lecturers prefer to use forum when they use e-learning for teaching and learning. Okay, forum. And if we have a look at this slide. Once again, I confirm the top five IDM modes that the teacher have used. I, on, on this side, I use the data from my previous study, which we survey experts from Thailand Cyber University, asking them which IDM mode they have used. And we have found that 100% of them have used discussion group. 68% of them have used brainstorming. 64% have used seminar, telephone conversation, and conference. But if we look at the result of this study, we can see the differences. Okay, Number one ranking is computer network, which is 60%, and brainstorming is 48%. So we can see that the trend of the tools that Thai lecturer use are not the same trend as what the expert from Thailand Cyber University have used. Okay, if you look at this chart, I ask the participants to please rank these five tools, computer network, meeting, teleconferencing, brainstorming forum, and satellite conferencing. Which mode they believe that if we apply mobility into it, it will be the best option for them. Okay, we have found that 60% of them believe that if we apply mobility into it, it will be very good. The opportunity for education will increase a lot. And only 9% say, oh, it would not increase, it's just average. The gap is 58%. Okay, so by looking at this chart, I can say that many of Thai lecturers believe in applying mobility to the computer network for e-learning. And I asked the participants to please confirm my previous study. I, asked, I told them first that TCU experts have ranked the IDM modes for e-learning like this. Number one that they have used most is discussion group. Number two is forum. Number three is brainstorming. Number four is conference. And number five is bus group. I asked them to please rank them one to five. Number one is the tools that they really believe it should be more significant for e-learning. And we have found that 48% agree with what TCU experts believe, okay, for the discussion group. 26% of the participants agree with the TCU experts that forum is the second ranking. 23% agree that brainstorming is number three. 22 persons agree that conference is number four, and 14 persons agree that bus group is number five. If we draw a linear line, 
it will be just like this, which is very good. What it means here is the TCU experts and Thai lecturers do have the same vision, do agree with these five technologies that if we use for e-learning, it will enhance the learning opportunity, opportunities most. Okay, and for my fourth part, my final part in the survey, I asked them to confirm if we need to change definition of the IDM to accommodate social media or not. And I have found that majority of them, or over 90%, say we don't have to change. We can stick with the current definition. So we don't have to worry about the social media aspect. It's already covered. Okay. And lastly, I have also checked correlation. I have found that the gender is significantly associated with application of mobility to IDM. The number two age is significantly associated with application of mobility to IDM. Age is also significantly associated with approval of current definition of the IDM. Another correlation is experience in e-learning as a learner is significantly associated with approval of current definition of IDM, 100% for this one. Lastly, the last correlation, experience in e-learning as an educator is significantly associated with approval of current definition of IDM, also another 100%. Okay, so I would like to conclude that most of the lecturers believe in the benefits of integration of mobility into the IDM. Second, gender, age, and experience of the lecturers strongly determine the application of IDM in e-learning. Third, approval of current definition for all 22 modes in IDM when taking social media into account is done by all the participants, which are over 90% approval rate. Lastly, the result that I got from this study is not always the same as the result that we obtained from TCU experts, which we have to investigate further to see if we have anything wrong or if there are some elements. But we can say one thing. We believe that because TCU is supposed to be the leading role for e-learning in Thailand, lecturers in TCU have to try all the tools they have to try all the modes. So they have more vast experience in uh, teaching online. So they might have different viewpoint. Okay, this may be one of the implications to investigate further. And um, that has concluded my presentation. If you would like to talk to me, you can email me at that address. Or if you have the QR code scanner, please feel free to scan me. Okay. And I think now we have a bit of time for question and answer. Please, thank you. We still have uh, 10 more minutes. So if anyone wants to ask questions or comment suggestion, you may do so. If you cannot scan it, I bring it a bigger one. OK, a bigger one. <laughs> So, any questions? Okay, if no, so thank you very much, uh, Professor Dwarasung Dong Jinda, for your wonderful presentation. And on behalf of uh, Thailand Cyber University, I would like to present a certificate to congratulate you on your successful presentation.